If this movie doesn't put a smile on your face, you might be a little bit dead inside. Okay, everybody, I can still see myself walking into motion pictures to see this thing. We are going back to 1978 to look at Clint Eastwood's Every Which Way But Loose. But before we go any further, before we dig into this gem anymore, once and again, and as always, to the trailer. Oh, raining again. You want to do something this evening? Of course. Not, well, not this evening. It's raining now. I want to get out now. How about taking in a new movie? Okay. What you have in mind? Hey, babe, what do you think of Clint Eastwood? Oh, I think of him a lot. <laughs> this squirrel's ripping on peanuts, ain't you, squirrel? <laughs> Can you imagine Clint Eastwood punching out a wise guy or laying out a bunch of guys who get out of line? Well, of course I can. Can you picture him falling hard for a sweet young thing who's got her eye on him? Oh, shoot, that's easy. How about him fighting for money? Well, uh, yeah, I guess so. Can you see him allowing a woman to beat up on him? Oh, now you're putting me on. In my thoughts, you're always with me. Well, what do you think of Clint Eastwood confiding his deepest, darkest secrets to an orangutan? When it comes to sharing my feelings with a woman, my stomach just turns to royal gelatin. Well, what do you think now? Now you're really kidding me. It's no joke. It's Eastwood like you've never seen him before. In a new film called... Every Which Way For News, you turn me. Every Which Way For News, inside the fire's burning me. In my mind, you just keep turning me. There can't be too many guys driving around this valley with an ape. Okay, this motion picture was directed by James Fargo. Name you might not remember that much, but it doesn't matter. We're talking about he did things like The Enforcer, Enforced Vengeance, and Game of Vultures, and uh, Caravans, and Born to Race, and uh, a Voyager of the Rock Aliens. And on TV, he did episodes, you know, like uh, The A-Team, and Scarecrow, and Mrs. King and a uh, hunter and you know he was like second assistant director and stuff on a bunch of other movies that you might remember but it is what it is just for this and just for the enforcer come on that's enough all right this motion picture stars the man him fucking self we're talking clint eastwood as one philo beto Let's go. We're talking about he has been in legendary stuff like Million Dollar Baby and Gran Torino and, of course, Dirty Harry and the other sequels. Like those five of them all together, say some shit like that. And Unforgiven and uh, Escape from Alcatraz and Firefox and The Outlaw Josie Wales and The Gauntlet and Kelly's Heroes and Pale Rider and The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. And about 50,000 other things. Let's face reality. It's Clint Eastwood. It's the way it is. It's the way it goes. The man is a fucking legend. Playing Miss Lynn Halsey Tyler. Uh-huh. Sandra Locke. Let's hit it. We're talking about... Well, obviously she's been in a bunch of Eastwood flicks. But we're talking about she's been in things like... Willard. And Death Game. And The Heart is a Lonely Hunter. And of course, like I mentioned, you know, Bronco Billy and Sudden Impact. And The Gauntlet which I love and reviewed already, and The Outlaw Josie Wales, and you know, she's Rat Boy, and, and the sequel to this, Every Which Way You Can, and she was on TV, you know, uh, Kung Fu, and Canon, and a bunch of other shit. So, just passed away not too long ago. Kind of sad. Sanja Locke, what more can I say? Playing Orville! Oh my God, man. Oh. The one and only Jeffrey Lewis. I fucking love Jeffrey Lewis. It's just the way it goes. Let's get going. We're talking about he has been awesome stuff like Double Impact, and fucking... 
Brocco Billy and I the Jury and High Plains Drifter and Salem's Lot, which he was awesome at, and Night of the Comet and Pink Cadillac and The Lawnmower Man and Maverick and uh, The Devil's Rejects and uh, uh, Army of One and a smorgasbord of television. You know what I'm talking about? So, Jeffrey Lewis, legend, the guy, he's one of my favorite guys. Anyway, let's, uh, let's keep going. Playing Echo. What? Echo. Beverly D'Angelo. Oh yeah, this was still pretty early in her career, I might add. She's been around some other things, but wait, wait, wait. Let's just get to the list. We're talking about she's been in little gems like Hair and American History X and those National Lampoon Vacation series, come on, and The Sentinel and Paternity and High Spirits and The House Bunny and the TV, you know, Honorage, Law and Order, uh, Mob, Insatiable, been around, long career, everybody knows Beverly D'Angelo just the way it is. And playing Ma. Oh my God, she does such an awesome job in this motion picture. Ruth Gordon. Oh yeah. Let's kick it. We're talking about she's been in stuff like Rosemary's Baby and My Bodyguard and probably most famously, you know, Heroin Maud and uh, Inside Daisy Clover and Boardwalk and uh, Scavenger Hunt and The Big Bus and Edge of Darkness. And she was on TV, you know, shit like Love Boat and Newhart and uh, fucking Kojak and Rhoda. So she made the rounds. She was in all the normal stuff. Anyway, Ruth Gordon, everybody knows. And here's the other part of this motion picture that just rocks. All of Eastwood's other actors are in this. When I call Eastwood's actors, that's because they popped up in so many of his flicks. We're talking about a legendary list of his people all in one movie. We'll get into more of that later. Anyway, but you've got to keep an eye out because you got legendary people. We're talking about you got Dan Vadis, who's in High Plains Drifter and The Gauntlet. And, you, and you John Quaid, man, Outlaw Josie Wales and High Plains Drifter. And Bill McKinney, you know, uh, Bronco Billy and Josie Wales. And uh, William O'Connell, Josie Wales, High Plains Drifter. And Walter Barnes, we're talking Bronco Billy and High Plains Drifter. And Gregory Walcott was uh, the Iger Sanction. And uh, uh, James McEachin, who was in, like, you know, Play Misty for Me and Sudden Impact. And Joyce Jameson, who was on a bunch of little B movies. And, and the outlaw Josie Wales. So, and believe me, even though I only named like one or two movies, a lot of those people, and a lot of those people were in more than just one or two Eastwood flicks. So, the gang is all here. It's rolling. It is what it is. I, let's just get to the story. Okay, everybody, I'm going to keep this 90 seconds or less so we can keep it fast, keep it moving, keep it entertaining, and so we can all get to where we would much rather be the summation. You got this truck driver in California. His name is Philo Beto. Down to earth guy, cool dude, likes to hang out with his best buddy Orville, and he likes to hang out with his other best buddy, Clyde. He happens to be an orangutan, but it is what it is. Anyway, he won Clyde. You see, Philo, he likes to do this uh, backyard fighting this warehouse fighting, basically illegal fighting for money. I think they used to call it squash back in the day. Whatever, it doesn't make a difference. Anyway, that's his gig. Truck driver by day, fighter by night, hangs with the orangutan and his best friend, and they just go around and get into mischief. Well, one night he sees this hot little chick singing in a bar, one Lynn Halls Taylor, and he kind of gets involved with her very, very briefly. But she's got a boyfriend, a boyfriend who's particularly jealous, so she says. Anyway, before you know it, she's into his life and she's out of his life. Philo can't understand what's going on. He's worried about her safety. So he goes off trekking across the country to find out what happened to his little Lynn Halsey Taylor and see if he can win her heart, win her back, rescue her, whatever the hell's going on. In the middle of all that, there's all these subplots. You got these two cops that he beat up in a bar one night. They're trekking after him to try to beat him up, kill him, do whatever they're going to do. And you got a whole motorcycle gang that is just out to get Philo Beto because he likes to beat up the gang members and take their motorcycles. That's the gist of the motion picture. That's the idea of it. Nothing major, nothing too hard to figure out. It is what it is. Let's get going to the summation. Okay, everybody. What makes every which way but loose work? And every which way but loose works. I'm telling you, this is one of those feel-good motion pictures that's going to make you happy inside when you watch it and happy after, after you've watched it. Before we get into all the details and all that kind of stuff, let's get the regular rigmarole out of the way. The directing, it's solid. I mean, come on, Fargo's not a genius by any stretch of the imagination, but he gets the job done. I mean, it's not perfect, but it is what it is. It doesn't have to be for this kind of motion picture. 
the writing, it's spot on. It's funny, but not too funny. It's ridiculous, but not too ridiculous. It's all you need to know. It's good, solid, we're done. And the acting. Oh my God, that's where this motion picture shines. Listen, folks, I already read to you the list of people that was in this motion picture. And all those people shine in one way or another in this motion picture. They are all funny as shit. Their timing is spot on. The characters they create are fucking hilarious. And it's really the acting jobs and the portrayals of those characters that really, really, really is like 70% of this motion picture and makes you want to watch it. It's just what it is. These guys kick it out the park. Now let's get back to what makes this motion picture work. This motion picture works, A, because of heart. It is. You like the people in it. You like Philo. You like Orville. Echo's cool. You love Ma, played by Ruth Gordon, who, by the way, is fucking spectacular in this motion picture. She is hilarious. She's spot on, funnier than shit. Man, I mean, I'm just telling you, Ruth Gordon kicks it in this motion picture. But anyway, you love the characters. You care about the characters. They're likable people. You can relate to the people. It is what it is. So heart is the reason that you really like this motion picture. Two, it's just pure fun entertainment. It's not asking you to think too much. It's not giving you some kind of moral bullshit. It's just a fun little movie. Kind of like when I reviewed like Hooper or if you talk about movies like, you know, The Cannibal Run or you know, Smokey and the Bandit. It's one of those kind of motion pictures. You go in, you have a good time, you feel happy, you leave, everything's cool, no harm, no foul, everybody has fun. You know, it's the shit that Hollywood doesn't make these days. But it's what this motion picture is and it delivers it effortlessly. And of course, if you're from that era, there's things about this motion picture you're just going to love. A, I told you earlier, it's all the Eastwood peeps. And they're here, and they are here in mass, and they are here in number. They deliver it. And it's so great to see them playing kind of against type. You know what I'm saying? These are people that play tough people. I mean, up to this point, Clint Eastwood, probably the most easygoing thing he ever did was maybe play Misty for me. But we're talking about, you know, he was Dirty Harry. He was the man with no name. He was Josie fucking Wales. He was all of that. And here he is, sidekicking it around with a monkey. In a comedy. A movie that his agents and everybody begged him not to make. They said it would be a flop. They told him it would die. They said it would be the worst decision of his life. And it turned out to be, if not, one of the biggest money makers of that year. Kudos to him for knowing what to do. And they apparently didn't know shit. It worked. And it was awesome seeing all of them in those roles, playing those parts, and you're like, oh my God, John Quaid's always been an asshole, but here he's fucking hilarious. It's brilliant. And you love part of it just for that. Also, you got Eastwood and Locke together again, man. Come on. We all know that from like, you know, 75 or 76 until like the mid 80s, they were joined at the hip in so many movies, it wasn't even funny. They were like your Hollywood couple. Right now, right now, close your eyes. Close your eyes and picture Clint Eastwood. And I don't care how much of his career it was, if I say to you, picture a woman standing next to him, you're gonna picture Sandra Locke. I don't care how many times he's been married or how many kids he's had or how many chicks he's dated, those two were the unit, you know it, you remember it. It doesn't matter if the relationship had some quirks, like you know she was married the entire time they were together. I know, it's crazy, but she was technically married and never divorced her husband, and he kind of got touchy about it at the end. So. He went out and got some other chick pregnant, and there was a lot going on. It was complicated. But when you think of Clint Eastwood, you think of Sandra Locke and the movies that they made together. It's just the way it is. It's just the way it goes. And keep in mind, too, this is also a motion picture made on what would at least look like a shoestring budget. There's not that much going on here, folks. This isn't some big extravaganza of sets and locations and special effects. There's really none of that kind of bullshit going on. It's just a bunch of people driving around, like, you know, Southern California, getting to misadventures that the most they probably spent money on was just trashing some junked out fucking motorcycles because they were blowing them up and smashing them every other second because, you know, the biker gang's a bunch of shitheads and they can't do shit right and they're fucking, whatever, they're hilarious. But that's what it is. There's not that much to this movie. There isn't. It's a couple of houses, a couple of beat up cars, and a bunch of actors. And for the love of God, that's what makes it amazing. This movie survives on its story, its likability, its acting, 
It's nothing more than what you see. And they give you exactly what you see. And they deliver it spot on. Everybody, I can only say this one time. You really, 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 if you haven't seen it, you have to go and check out Every Which Way But Loose. I'm telling you, it's one of the all-time fun, mindless romp movies that you'll ever see. It's a feel-good flick. Yeah, the ending kind of was like, oh, that sucks, but that doesn't reflect on the whole motion picture, and you enjoy it, and you love it, and you feel it. They made a part two a couple years later. Yes, they did. The money was too high. The demand was too great. They made a sequel. It was all right. It got a little bit too goofy at points. It did have William Smith in it, and that's not too bad right there because he was really cool, but you have this one, and that's the main one, the one you should check out, the one you need to check out. Does it have a couple of flaws? Yeah, maybe here and there. Maybe the directing could have been better in a couple of spots. Is what it is. But it doesn't make a difference. Could Smoking the Bandit had a couple touch-ups that made it better? Of course. But that's not why you're there. You're there just to have fun. Everybody, once and again, and as always, be good. Take care. Stay out of trouble. Help a friend. Look out for a neighbor. Be kind to a stranger, and above all else, under no circumstances, ever, ever, take any bullshit from anybody. Go watch this movie. See you soon.